riding the boom, right? Granted, my wheels are here, so when I take this handle back, that's what releases the brake and allows the boom to move. A lot of people tend to watch the wheels, not where you should be looking. You want to be watching that up there, where we have our shock mount. That's what holds the microphone. I like to drive the boom with one hand here, so that I'm using this hand as a spotter, but I'm visually watching up there to make sure that I'm not going to be hitting anything. Now, before I start driving this boom, two locks to point out. Now, obviously, there are three handles here. This one on the top, this is our tilt lock. I won't be able to move this boom up or down, can't tilt up and down while that is locked. It should always be in the locked position unless you are standing up here operating it. So we always keep that tilt lock on. Or of course, unless you need to move it, tilt it for whatever reason. The boom's a little high. Typically when we strike this at the end of the day, we would lower this down. So it's out of the position. There is a lock back here. So if you're noticing that you're trying to move this and it's not going, like I heard that, that was a key for me thinking something's rubbing. That was the sound of metal on metal. The lock wasn't on, but it wasn't quite off. So I was essentially stripping it, right? Don't do that. Be mindful of those metal on metal noises. Okay, that wasn't stripping it. Was. <laughs> it sounds a little better though, right? It sounded yeah. kind of grainy, huh? Sounds right? a lot so better. Can, what year is this boom? Older than my mom. 1902. <laughs> Really? <laughs> it looks like Prohibition era. I wouldn't be surprised if it's probably um, either a, a, the very earliest, or early 80s model, but I'm probably thinking like late 60s, 70s. Juan would know. Okay. Mm. All right. Here, can you give me this? At least it's not older than me. Okay. So, the tilt handle. I realized I couldn't quite reach it, which made me realize the boom was a little too high. Don't just loosen this tilt lock without holding on to the boom arm. Okay? Make sure you're holding on to it before you loosen it, lefty loosey, in case the counterbalance for some reason isn't balanced properly. Maybe you've got more mics on there than usual and you don't want it to fly in either direction. It really should stay like this. So as I'm loosening this tilt arm, I like to keep this locked as I'm driving it. However, the pan. I want to say it's a silver one. Lucky Lucy. Yep. So tilt lock, pan lock. I want to keep that loose when I'm driving it because I often need to move this from side to side as it's going places. When we're operating during a show, we would actually have our boom operator standing up here on this platform. However, before we have them standing, we need to make our boom a wider base as the triangle so that we have an easier way for them to balance. Before we put that up real quick here, let's do the wheels first. So these wheels right now are locked, so we need to unlock them. And then I need one more volunteer. Come on up, Kenneth. What we're gonna do is we'll work with my side first, Kenneth and I's side first. Okay. We're going to push the boom slightly towards Garrett. He's gonna spot it so we don't Superman it and push it over. Not too easy to do, but possible. And as Kenneth lightly pushes this towards Garrett, that's gonna take the pressure off the wheel so I can slide it out, all right? This widens the wheel base. Yeah, so on the count of three, go ahead, one, two, three, push it over, widen out, bring it down, lock it down. Now the first one was easy because he doesn't have much resistance over there, it's not very wide in the base, right? But now I'll come over here, you're spotting. Okay. And we're gonna do, uh, I'll come over here and do the wheel, you'll do the pushing. Oh yeah, we gotta, uh, come on over here, Kelly, you'll do the wheel. Garrett's going to do the pushing, so unlock it. I think we unlocked it, right? It's unlocked. And then on the count of three, Garrett's one is pushing, so he'll call it out. It. One, two, three, there. push, push, it. bring it down. <laughs> we communicate when we move heavy items and pushing things, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So we want a nice wide base when we're standing up there operating it so that it's not going to tip over on you. That's going to make it much more stable, okay? Everybody crouch down real quick. Take a look underneath there. You'll see that underneath these little wings, we have two metal bars. You can go ahead and pull that one out there. And it has a flat side on this so that we want that flat side up. And then we can rest these wings on that. And we have a nice wide base for our boom operator. 
Uh, Brian, would you please get me an apple box? Lucy, up and down. What if I want to change the direction that the microphone's pointing? Mm. That's where this arm comes into play here. There's a gold locking mechanism. Sorry, I don't know the actual name for it. Maybe it's probably brass. This locks in the arm that allows us to swivel our mic mount. So, mm. Leilani, or sorry, what's your name? Gonzalo, will you walk across the room, walk towards Moya there? And as he's walking and talking, I'm following him and preparing him, right? So your boom operator would be up here working with this in order to follow your talent if there was movement in your set that needed such following. When you're done at the end of the day, we'll lock that down here, we'll lock this here, we'll lock this here, we'll hop down on the apple box side. It's a little rickety, but it will hold you. I haven't seen anybody break it yet. Going in one direction, making a circle, that's an overhand loop. Okay? Mm -hmm. The next one, instead of making another overhand loop, I don't want to make two of these in a row. Watch my hands. I'm flipping my wrist and grabbing the bottom side of the cable. I'm going to follow it with another regular O, regular overhand loop. And then if you watch my hands, I'm starting with my hand on top. Put your hand out, hand on top. Wrong way, Mohammed. Your hand uh, palm facing down. That's how I should describe it. Palm facing down. Flip your hand, and you put your knuckles together, and you're grabbing the underside of that loop. All right? So that's called the wrist flip, because you're just flipping it over your wrist. That's why I called it that. As I'm doing that, you'll see that it kind of kinks up a little bit, but that's okay. As you do your overs and your unders, these kinks will work themselves out. You'll notice, for example, at Dr. Phil, there was a couple utilities there who were following alongside behind the cameraman <coughs> over and under all the way. It doesn't get coiled, doesn't get kinked on you. Try doing it under first. Because I was having problems doing it over. Yeah, I'm just not capable to do that. I don't know why you're like, I think I'm accepting. No, I don't want to do anything like this. And then just a little bit harder. Watch out, guys. Hey, you're encroaching in our. Right. We're not supposed to grow. But I see the danger is you got to really know what you're doing here so you can watch the front. So watch the green screen, change hands. That's the other thing, changing hands. Yeah. Yeah. Straighten it a little bit. Yeah, go straight a little bit. Now cut it to your left, all the way, all the way. Watch the ladder, all the way. Straighten it out a little bit. Success! Yeah! Yeah! What's up, Quan? What are y'all getting ready to kick it about today? No, no, no. Let me ask you a question. No, no, no. What do you think about the instructor here? Oh, Jen, she's the best. Well, all my circles are like different. My circles are just different. No, no, no.